The Lagos State Traffic Management Authority has adopted a new strategy for enforcement of road traffic laws to ensure safety of its road users in Lagos State. We look at this new strategy and analyze its effects on the people on the program this morning. Also on the breakfast, darkness eminent as electricity workers consider a nationwide industrial action to press home their demands from government. We're also going through the biggest stories on the front pages of today's national dailies and analyzing those biggest stories. We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning, reaching you live from our studios right here on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartel. And I am Messi Ebopo. It's good to have you join us this beautiful morning. All right. And of course, um, interesting conversations lined up, <laughs> Messi. Uh, you know, 24 hours is a long time when it comes to this country, especially the polity and current affairs. A lot can happen in 24 hours. A lot True. can happen. We have a, a very bumper package for our listeners this morning, viewers this morning. And of course, uh, you have to just grab uh, maybe a cup of uh, coffee or tea or something while you're getting set for a day. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Uh, we always usually start off with a top trending segment. And uh, um, this one is, is, is quite bizarre. I haven't seen anything like this, Mercy. Um, for a while, it's for a country that is um, not a pariah nation, uh, for a country that doesn't have any international sanctions on it. Remember the days of Sani Abacha, uh, where Nigeria was sort of a pariah nation, and um, some countries said, no, you can't come to our country because you're against democracy. I remember when uh, Muammar Gaddafi was, was leader of Libya, you know, he had um, uh, a travel ban of some sort. He couldn't travel to some countries, and he couldn't even fly. They imposed a, a, a no-fly restriction on him. So when Gaddafi had to move to... You know, places like Nigeria, other parts of Africa, he went by road. You know, Gaddafi drove all the way from Libya to, to Abuja. Well, this is bizarre because it concerns a country, Nigeria, um, which is a sovereign nation. You know, democracy has no international sanctions or travel restrictions whatsoever. And so we were happy because it's affecting the president. <laughs> no, you I'm know, not sure that's something. But, but this, this is the information the Qatari government, you know, um, uh, the information popped up that they denied. You know, you know, denied President Buhari a visa and told him to reapply. Uh, that, was, that was what we heard. You know, they denied President Buhari uh, a visa permit, you know, to visit Qatar, which is uh, the host of the forthcoming World Cup uh, in 2022. Uh, and this is one headline I saw. You know, Buhari's request to visit Doha rejected. Uh, Qatar leader asked president to reapply in 2023 now that medium um, i i tagged the fake news medium <laughs> yeah so i don't i don't i don't go to their page for anything so uh, we had to do a, a search you know we had to do a search and then we realized that um what was what happened uh what happened was that this is diplomacy you know when a, a foreign leader is visiting another country he's not just going there because he just feels like visiting there should be some sort of um uh some sort of back and forth you know negotiation because it's a, it's a big deal you know it's a big deal for a foreign leader to visit it it, it has to the protocol you know even the host must be willing and ready and then they go through so what the qatari government did was they requested for uh, a change of dates for the planned visit of President Mohammed Buhari to the country in September. You know, they requested a change of date. Now, according to a note dated August 19 from the embassy, the embassy of Qatar in Abuja, uh, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the dates of the proposed visits are not, uh, or visitation rather, uh, the dates are not suitable. These are the words of that note. Uh, the note established that uh, Nigeria had communicated in writing that President Buhari accepted he was invited. That's why I said you don't visit, you don't go to a, a president who just stand up. Said me he wants to go for a vacation. But if it's an official, official visit, there obviously needs to would be a sort of an accept, an, an invitation, or we're having something come. So the note written to the presidency, or the president, the Nigerian government, uh, communicating writing, said that President Buhari had, quote, accepted to visit Qatar on 11th to 12th September 2022 on invitation of His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, a mayor of the state of Qatar. And this Sheikh is 
very pro-African. He's been, in fact, he's trying his best to endear Qatar to the world, you know. So it, it would even be a shock to hear that they, they said, oh, go, go and reply next time. You know, and that's why, you know, sometimes you wonder why some of these news sites are, like, serially will share fake news, you know. Yeah, so, no, so, 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 so. It, this is what happened. They, the, the instructed the federal government to propose a new date. So please propose a, a new date for the visit, preferably during the first quarter of 2023. And I want to read some lines from that note so that we understand the context. The context is very important in every story. It says, quote, the embassy of the state of Qatar in Abuja presents its compliments to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Republic of Nigeria Regions Department, and with reference to the latter's note, it states the reference uh, number, dated 12th of August 2022, informing His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, has accepted, informing that, rather, His Excellency has accepted uh, to visit Qatar on 11th to 12th September 2022 on the invitation of His Highness, and state his name, now, it go, goes on to say, the proposed dates for the visit are not suitable and kindly request the Nigerian side to propose other dates for the visit during the first quarter of 2023. The embassy of the state of Qatar avails itself of this opportunity to renew the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Republic of Nigeria's uh, the assurance of its highest consideration, uh, the statement had. So, um, they invited him, it seems, uh, and then he he accepted and they said, okay, please change the date. So what the cable, which is a medium I trust, you know, what the cable said is they understand that the rejection of the planned visit is due to the uh, country's preparation for the 2022 World Cup. So they don't want, you know, to have too much to do. Uh, they want to come after the World Cup so they can focus on his visit. Well, so... Uh like you've rightly stated, bizarre would be the word because if you look at the World Cup, the World Cup is built to start in November and through, you know, December and asking that the president reapply in, you know... They didn't ask him to reapply. That's a... Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so that's actually that, that, the report. That is, that is, that is the, the was They're saying that, okay... trying to make. Uh, of course, the point you're trying to make. But however, it was said that he should uh, actually the, the, choose... The Ministry of Foreign Affairs should, yeah, should, should propose a new date. A, a new date. Mm. And, and for them, they've also said that, like you have rightly mentioned, that it will be too much, uh, you know, on the plate to have to grapple with the World Cup mm -hmm. and what have you. But that hasn't really... You know, when we started this conversation, you said that a lot of people were excited about oh, the fact that he's a president. But that's not the thought. Mm. If you we, we're excited through, at all. Qatar uh, rejected his application no, 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 to no, visit. No, it's not because I follow yeah. the uh, I follow the conversation. Some people think that this is embarrassing and totally not mm -hmm. acceptable. You know that the commander in chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the president. Don't forget that Nigerians will always win any cyber war. You know, it feels like you can attack Nigerians in Nigeria, but outsiders are not expected to attack Nigeria. And this has actually not sat down very well. We love Nigerians. They're not really happy. I followed the conversation all through, and some persons are saying, no, this is totally unacceptable because we're expected. I mean, there should be some um, diplomacy, diplomatic visa. The president shouldn't be under any kind of restriction, especially in a democratic uh, you know, process or system where there's been no restriction or ban. What's the reason? And if you look at it really, um, you ask yourself, when is the World Cup um, supposed to start? We're looking at November through December. Really, if the president is supposed to visit between September, I mean, what's the big deal, right? We have September, we have October. So why are we making, you know, a big uh, fuse about this? I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I'm still trying to understand it because, like you rightly stated, it feels very strange and, you know, the information are really not out there. But... Um, it's all right. Uh, that's what it is. But we have to move away for the want of time. We have more interesting conversations. Y y uh, yes, in yes, indeed. Case. You know, it's, it's a mixed bag as usual. You know, you never have one train of reactions in the country. But um, uh, I think it's important to, at uh, one point we're making is that um, they didn't ask the president to reapply. He didn't apply. So you can't reapply for what you didn't apply for. Uh -huh. and, um, and they didn't reject his request to visit Doha. Uh, the Qatari capital. He didn't request to visit. He was invited. 
So they're so, asking that he so should per, per suggest per, another date. But yes, I mean, yes, but, but, is this, but, but is this a change in shadow? So purveyors of fake news should not... I don't need purveyors uh, uh, you know, fake news to I, I totally to understand. Stop. stop. Nigerians should actually know those who are, who are, who are um, masters in the craft of... of, of um, uh, I use craft, but I don't use the one that comes before the craft. <laughs> who are masters in the craft of... Um, of 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 spewing fake news in a bit to to bring this. I mean, what is the what is the so what's the purpose of of so, of um, so, so he should choose another date. I mean, yeah. I, so what, I, what, I what is what is the purpose of of a, a, a medium that is is um is verified on Twitter as a news medium in Nigeria constantly and consistently pushing fake news. You know, it's that's why I said it by saying I don't regard this medium who said Buhari's request to re, uh, re, re, request to visit or rejected Qatar leader as uh, uh, president to reply. And if you go under their tweet, you have somebody who put up something. You know, someone says, "Kai, you fit open factory with your headline manufacturing capabilities." You know, it, it's 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 clear that that was just intentionally put out. No, fake no, news. but but, but um, however, another I mean, another one is saying that. Um, Okay, I have to give you a five star five star rating for your your fake news capabilities. You know, so I'm wondering what is the what is no, the but but, but let's even stay with the content, like you always say, and content and context of this particular situation. However, you know, the government has actually asked that uh, there be another date. The government choose another date. Uh, you know, for to honor the invitation because it was not like, I mean, he actually applied to, he was invited. And over time, we also remember that you have uh, the uh, monarch who's also visited Nigeria. Just in recent times, has been hosted right here in Nigeria. The president has hosted him, uh, you know, over time. But the, the, the issue surrounding is the, uh, the fact that, oh, he can't come at a certain time. What exactly is the reason? I mean, choosing another date, what, what exactly is going on in Doha that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the most populous, you know, uh, black nation, cannot, greatest nation. I mean, you're talking about uh, number one powerful nation when you talk about Africa and the continent. But that's yeah, what uh, it is. Yeah, but yeah, I you, understand. You, 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 you ask an important question. And um, you see, in the international diplomacy, this is normal. You know, it is not... Oh, and when now, you say, so, sorry, can no, I, can when, I, can when I you just say point it's normal, to, Because it, so, so the reason can I, is Can that, I speak to what you said? This is normal. Uh, because it's not, he's not announced to Nigerians that that he's visiting Qatar. It's just, there's a no issue here, and like I said, Nigerians should should not ap appeal to those who spread fake news to stop feeling. They should actually reject those who spread fake news, like this news medium. Nigerians should reject them. I never use them in all my you know editorial meetings. I always would reject stories from because they are consistently spreading fake news. Consistent, I flag them. You know, um, however, you know, there's something called diplomatic back channels. All this is still on the level of back channels. This is just a, a note that, that filtered through to uh, 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 a news organization. And that news organization put it up. But these are back channels. No, 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 but Kofi. Okay, so this is it, Messi. I call you up. I say, Messi, how far? Uh, and they come house. So you say, okay. Or you say, oh, Kofi, come. Come and eat uh, a pan cocoa. <laughs> All right. And then I uh, maybe invite me and Marianne because we are both from Calabar. And then on a day to the day, so please, something came up, and you have an emergency, you want to do it that day, so can we change the date to another day? It's okay, we did. So let's come the following weekend. So fine. And then someone come and say, ah, we called you, or we want to visit you, and you said, no, we can't come. We should call you later and see if you change your mind. That's, that's No, 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 fake. but, 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 but totally you understand. Fake. No, no, to be you very know, honest, like you have rightly mentioned, I mean, I understand the dynamics of saying that, you know, news media might be fake, but that's not it. Well, even looking at the content, you and know, the, it's the, the access. It's normal. I mean, you know, because it's, it's a lot of people... on the level of diplomatic back channels. No, we understand. Right I mean, if you say you know diplomatic... How many, do you know how many visits are cancelled in, in, you know, in international how diplomacy? Many, how many visits how many, have been cancelled you know that is not in front? Excuse me. Do you know how many presidents plan to visit places and then they say, oh, sorry, we've so, changed but, but our mind? But would you blame... I mean, it's not, it's it's not a matter of changing your mind. It's a normal thing. So, um, Kofi, I, I understand what you're trying to say, but you also need to look at the reason that has been given or whatever it is, right? Or whether it's a suggestion or whether or not it's not true. And don't forget that there's no, you know, you can't talk about the sun, you know, no smoke without fire. Not to even, you know, uh, tilt towards that other aspect. But we're saying that if you, if you look at it, I mean, what, what could it be? What exactly could it be? 
with all of the excuses that we put out, not the one is tilting to that dimension, but one is also querying the consent. Now, come on. This is the president of a country, black, populous nation, very powerful. That's so, what we're saying. We're so, not saying so, that so these the things cannot happen. What is, what is difficult to understand that the Qataris have said that we need to want to focus on the World Cup, which is just a couple of I'm weeks. I'm saying that the co after couple the of weeks, really. Pre you know, the the so, president is okay, so, in the so, president. We're looking so at the is, president. Is Buhari complaining? No, not so. Kofi, you, you is, need is to it, understand. Is it, is it hard to understand it, that they want? It's not a matter of fact. Is it hard Buhari to understand that? Sorry, is it hard to understand that they just want to focus on? So they don't. They, they hope him well. We understand that they want to focus on it. If the president was built to visit Doha between the 11th of September and the 12th of September. And if the excuse why another date should be picked for this visit or honor the invitation that was given should be, you know, sometime in 2023 so that we can actually focus. And everyone is saying, the concern is, oh, if you look at it, the president is going to stay 11 and 12. I mean, he's already specific. How many days? What exactly is the president going to be doing when he gets to Qatar? Is it that he's going to be everywhere? Is it going to stop, you know, the administration and processes? I understand diplomacy and diplomatic, you know, strategy and all of the activities that have to go on. But, you know, that's the question. The event is built to start in November and, and in December, that's when the World Cup will start. So what exactly, how many persons in one is Buhari? who destroy let's move away Kofi you know we don't have time we need to move on to other issues another one yeah, on the phone yeah. Buna, is that the Nigerian forces uh, they've been accused according to the indigenous people of Biafra uh, that's IPOP saying that uh, Nigerian security forces are using Igbo men as spokespersons for their propaganda and that's because you have if you look at security uh, for instance now they said that the Nigerian army, that's the, uh, the Nigerian police and the Department of State Services, are using a uh, relations officer, that's a PR, because these persons are from this region, are using them uh, as tools to ridicule Nigerians of Igbo extraction. Freely, you know, I'm still wrapping my mind about, I mean, my, my mind around all of these issues, really, but that's the thought. And if we constantly talk about the issue of marginalization, this is me now bringing this to the fore, uh, constantly. So you have several regions who are saying that we're not being tagged along, we're not carried out, uh, we're not carried along in you know, several activities, for, for instance, the Igbos have not produced a president and what have you, but you, you still have you know, the Igbos as PRO in holding very critical positions, spokespersons for different security um, you know, architecture. I'm just, so I'm just wondering, is it that, can we really have enough? What is it really enough? Can, can anything even be enough? Should also this be a problem? So you are a spokesperson, you're from, let's even say that you're from the, uh, one of the... It's your long one. <laughs> okay, so that's your choice. Well, just so you're from Michel Langwa. And, and then all of a sudden they're saying that, you know, because you are the PRO for the police, or for the Nigerian army or the DSS and what have you, then you are now a tool for propaganda. I mean, I'm just saying. Can humans be satisfied? Can we ever get to a point where we say, hey, this is, this is what it is? So um, I'm just taking it back and I'm wondering what exactly you know, the issue here is. Because we're saying people are not marginalized. And then you have some persons occupying this position. And then we're saying, oh, they're being used as a tool. What kind of tool again? So, 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 so the information is that the, um, the three agencies uh, stated by um, Ima Powerful, of course, that's not his name. You know, so um, the you three agencies powerful? stated by Ma Powerful, <laughs> uh, the spokesman of the independent people of Biafra Group, I think that's a pseudonym. Um, he mentioned the uh, public relations officer, the spokesperson for the Nigerian army, uh, Brigadier General Onyema Nwacheku, um, former police spokesman Frank Mba, and DSS mouthpiece Dr. Afun Naya uh, as instances. You know, but interesting to me is the fact that Frank Mba is no longer the spokesman of a, uh, the police. So why is he being mentioned? Um, and uh, these individuals, were they, I mean, you know, some, some things are, are not necessary to, to is it that Ima Powerful has run out of what to say? You know, because, because I mean, people are working in organizations, they give appointments. Did they put a gun to their head, you know, to force them to, to, to take, uh, accept the positions? No. Did they force them? No. Did they have a choice to say, I, I want to leave this organization? Yes. You know, and I think that um, uh, it, it's high time the, 
the group, you know, through a spokesperson, really looks at the very important and salient issues that uh, need to be addressed. And, um, you know, things like this make a mockery of, 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 of the whole idea of agitating for self-actualization, which is a very important um, uh, 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 concept and idea. You know, you look at the, the salient issues of self-actualization, the salient issues of uh, marginalization, um, and the issues surrounding marginalization of peoples from the Southeast in Nigeria. They are very important critical components of this, this uh, marginalization that need to be highlighted from time to time. You know, and um, it, it, it begins to water down the importance of such a critical issue of self actual which is guaranteed by by most of the international all the international conventions that Nigeria is signed up to uh, guarantee at least some aspect of it would, would support you know the, the conventions that have to do with human rights you know rights of people would support in a way you know uh, self-actualization. For crying out loud, Nigeria itself as a nation is built on self-actualization, the, the, the independence of the country in 1960. So it's a right which they, they, they are allowed to agitate for. However, um, this particular matter, you know, it's not as important as the main, the meat, you know, who is being a spokesperson for, you know, let, let's, let's see the organization get to the and stick to the main issues, which they've been doing in the past. Which they've been doing in the past. You know, for this one, I think it's neither here nor there. People who, yeah, want, to, be, be who, who want to work, you know, and they are doing a job, um, don't, don't, don't spoil the opportunities to be appointed positions because, okay, well, we don't want it. We oh, yeah, remove them. You know, they've been able to rise through the ranks through distinguished career. And Frank Combat didn't do a bad job. You understand. Oh, Yama Wachiko is doing his job. It's you know, okay, it's a good job, you know. And the fine gentleman. So why spoil their chance of, of survival? You know? Yeah, we have to move to the next story. So yeah, mercy. All right, so we, we have the next one here. Um, a trailer falling on uh, on the Legacy Battle Expressway worsening traffic. Um that that is not news because it happens from time I think the last one happened about uh, maybe a week or so ago where a trailer fell. It's normal. It happens there, <laughs> you know. It just—it's almost like they, they plan to. Well, let me just leave the analysis uh, for you. I'll come on later. But a trailer fell on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, and that was in the recent traffic situation on the road. Um, it was about uh, Tuesday morning. It tumbled on the Kara Bridge. This Kara Bridge is also a, uh, a flag. People have flagged that area. Uh, we hear a team of the FRSC, that's Nigeria's uh, Federal Road Safety Corps, uh, was already at the scene yesterday to solve the situation. Um, uh, at the time the report was filed, the traffic on the road from Berga, the Berga point, for those who know Lagos, it was a point of concern. It's been a, a, an issue over the past few weeks with the construction going on on the road. And the uh, Federal Controller of Works uh, in Lagos State, Madame, I've forgotten her name now, ordering a particular U-turn to be blocked. That was the issue. And it cost, uh, she Olu said it was going to help. Mrs. Olu yes, she said it was going to help the uh, smooth flow of traffic. but. Yeah, I mean, because two Fridays ago it was hell. Yeah, I mean, because, um, I mean, I was going to say that when I saw that report in the news, uh, first thing that came to my mind was the fact that the government had acknowledged, you know, the suffering of road users, especially with the construction that's ongoing, and the fact that you know they were going to suspend uh, work on that particular road to ensure that uh, persons actually have free flow of movement and what have you to their different, uh, you know, location. But it's, it's a real effort because, it, on, I mean, that's a commitment. Government saying, we understand, we have seen the challenges uh, of what's going on, and so we're going to try. We also have reports of persons who have lost their lives uh, on that particular road uh, because of the whole uh, traffic that's going on and all the situations, stampeding, what have you, people being in traffic. I even saw that some people earned a job, just earning a living where people have to take people on their backs like camels and horses. It's, it's, from it's one interesting. Point. You know, it's in Port Harcourt, they were pushing people on a wheelbarrow. No, it's not wheelbarrow. When, when now, yes, you to... built a new flyover at a place called Rumokoro, <laughs> and uh, it, it was completed, refused to, 
to he, he he hadn't sorry uh, commissioned it so for some weeks or months he was there and so people were not allowed cars are not allowed to use it so you have to drop you at one edge and you have to trek people were tired so pushing them in wheelbarrows no no this one people I, have I, to take I, them have, have the take, take them you know uh, take them on the back like back them and cross from one point to the other and some persons were making a living earning a living <sighs> like horses and camels because this is what horses and camels actually do but we see that right in our space uh, let the government if the government has actually Actually made a commitment to ensuring that road users do not suffer then let them keep to you know the commitment it's it's a lot i mean sometimes I ask myself if you see some of those heavy duty vehicles plying our ways some of them are transporting different products sensitive products and i ask myself don't we have all the means of transport in this product for instance let's even say um you, you find you know the, the the heavy duty vehicles carrying petrol uh, carrying whatever plying the roads because the road first of all is not even motorable for um, you know vehicles that are not heavy duty to yeah. ply and then you now have heavy duty what happens to having pipelines where you know all of these products can actually pass through without necessarily going through our roads it's, it's a you lot know, you know you wonder what would cause a vehicle just to tumble like that yeah. it, 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 <laughs> you Let's already know we, we we have up the press of the press up next of course uh, lawyer uh, Tunde Kolaola is standing by to give us expert analysis. We'll be right back after this break.